very good morning students so uh, in this particular lecture we will be talking about the larval forms which are present in the phylum mollusca so we have uh, discussed the larval form in the case of crustaceans the arthropods in the case of the platyhelminthes uh, in the case of echinoderms so here we are actually emphasizing on the larval forms which are present in the phylum mollusca so uh, first of all we should uh, know that the development in the case of the mollusks it is uh, it can be either direct or indirect so uh, if the development is of the direct type so there are no larval stages found in that particular development but if i talk about the indirect type of the development in the mollusks then uh, this type of the development is with the larval stages so uh, as we know that the direct development is not involving any kind of the larval stages uh, but in the case of the mollusks uh, there are animals which are having the indirect development with the formation of the larval stages so <clears throat> basically three types of the larvae they are found in the phylum mollusca so these larval stages they are the trochophore larva this is the first larval stage this is the trochophore the second larval stage is called as a valigar larva so this valigar larva is very very important as per the mollusks are concerned and the third type of the larva which is found in the mollusca phylum is the glochidium larva so these are the three types of the larval forms which are found in the phylum mollusca now i'll be taking these three forms one by one and uh, if i start with the very first larval stage it is called as a trochophore larva of the mollusks so uh, this particular larva it is uh, very comparable to uh, an apple shape or you can say a pear shape in the body so if i uh, go for the dimensions of this particular larva it is measuring about uh, <clears throat> 0 0.4 to 0.6 mm in length and if i talk about the structure of this particular larva first of all we have the apical tuft on the very top and uh, it is uh, actually emerging from an apical organ which is present on the top of this particular uh, trochophore larva so uh, this particular larva is also having a circle of the preoral cilia so as we have uh, gone through the different uh, ciliatures uh, in the larval forms previously also so it is also called as the prototroch so it is also known as a vallum so the prototroch or the vallum it is dividing the body into two parts but these two parts they are not equal they are actually unequal parts the upper part is a smaller one and the lower part is a larger part now the upper part which is the smaller part of the body it is consisting of a, uh, you can say a part which is very close to the mouth so it is called as a prostomium and the lower part it is uh, actually wearing the mouth and the anus so pro means prior to the mouth so it is again uh, you can say prior to the mouth that's why it is called as a prostomium part so uh, the prototroch it is dividing the main body into two parts the upper one is the prostomium and the lower one is bearing actually the mouth and the anus now if i talk about uh, <coughs> the preoral part so this is a large convex kind of a surface 
uh, on the top which we have the apical organ as you can see in the diagram and uh, on the top we have the apical tuft also so the prototroch the apical tuft they are helping the larva in uh, like uh, movement the upper end it is consisting of this particular apical tuft and similarly on the lower side we are also having a tuft of uh, the cilia so this is called as the telotroch the lower side uh, ciliary tuft is called as a telotroch now if i go with uh, some of the more uh, you can say the structures of the stroke of four the mouth is not on the tip it is somewhat in the middle and uh, we also found some kind of eye spots in the trochophore larvae and uh, these eye spots they are helping in detecting the light while they are traveling from one place to the other place now the intestine it is uh, complete so it is having a mouth it is having a dedicated stomach it is having a dedicated intestine and it is having a anus also so we can say that the alimentary canal or the digestive part it is complete and uh, very close to the anus we have an anal vesicle so whole of the system which is uh, for the feeding process it is complete in the trochophore larvae now as previously we had talked about the prototroch so in this particular larva with the prototroch we also have a metatroch on the lower middle side so it is uh, close to the mouth and uh, we can say that mouth is in between the prototroch and the metatroch actually and the central groove which is formed in between these two trochs the it is called as the food groove so here in the diagram you can very well see the presence of the food groove inside uh, you can say or in between the two proto and the metatrochs so this is uh, the structure of a typical trochophore larva so uh, if I uh, go beyond this structure what we have is that uh, esophagus the stomach the intestine the anus they are all present in this particular larva and uh, the size of the mouth it is having two ciliated elevations and uh, which are consisting of a uh, you can say uh, the cilia and they are actually present on both the sides of the mouth so the lower end bearing a bunch of the cilia it is called as a telotroch as we have discussed earlier on the top we have the prototroch and at the lower end we have the metatroch on the upper end we have the apical tuft on the lower side we have the telotroch so generally the planktonic uh, feeders they are residing in the water so this larva the telotroch larva it is generally planktonic it is eating uh, on uh, various planktons it is eating on the debris of the planktons it is feeding on the tiny suspended particles which are present in the water and uh, it can take both the types of living and dead suspended particles which are present in the surrounding medium so that's why this larva can uh, have a greater you can say uh, uh, you can say greater uh, extent of uh, living in adverse conditions so it can take any type of food which it is having uh, in that particular medium of living so uh, generally speaking the body of the larva is divided basically into three main regions so these three regions they are the pretrochal region 
the pygidial region and then we have the growth zone so these are the basic uh, parts of the body if i talk about the very first part which is the pretrochal region it is consisting of an apical plate the prototroch and the area which is surrounded by the mouth so this is the pretrochal area of the body and if i talk about the second part which is called as the pygidium so it is consisting of the telotroch and the area surrounding the anus so this is the uh, you can say the lower part of the body of the uh, the larva and if i talk about the third region the apical or not the apical this is the growth zone so growth zone it lies between the mouth and the telotroch so this is the growth zone where the growth of the larva it happens and the trochophore larva it later it develops into another larval form which is called as a valigar larva so this is a second form as we have discussed that larva of the mollusks these are of three types we can have three types of larvae in the phylum mollusca so trochophore is the first form valigar is the second form and third form was the glucidium larva so here i am telling you that the trochophore larva is later developing into a valigar larva so that was about the very first form which is the trochophore larva now students if i talk about the uh, next larval form which is the valigar larva so here the valigar actually it is uh, uh, you can say a uh, larva which is having a foot and it is very close to a mollusk in the structure so what is present in this particular larva is that pre oral ciliate area is present and vellum it begins to like uh, grow on both the sides as a flap and it is a very delicate kind of larva as the mollusks they are also the soft bodied animals so this particular larva is quite resembling the adults because it is having a shell also so the anterior end of the larva it is provided with eyes and tentacles and this is very close characteristic to an adult mollusk and larva is also having a shell so it is again a character which is very close to the adult mollusk and if i talk about the vellum it is developed from the prototroch of the trochophore larva so if you uh, take up the structure of the trochophore so there we had discussed the prototroch the line of the cilia so that has developed into the vellum of this particular valigar larva now if i uh, go for uh, <clears throat> the particular structure of this larva the heart and the kidney they are present in this particular larval stage now these are situated at the interior end of the body immediately behind the vellum so as vellum has been developed from the prototroch so immediately behind this vellum we have the heart and the kidney in this particular valigar larva now again there is a very fundamental character of the mollusks this is the statocyst and this is an equilibrium mechanism and statocyst and gill rudiments they are also present in this particular larval form this is again very close to the adult mollusk now if we talk about the vellum it is having it is composed of long cilia so these cilia they are functioning in the locomotion and uh, this particular larva is going for 
the suspended particles which are present in the water again as it was taken by the trochophore larva so it can have the suspended particles and uh, the type of the ingestion is the suspension feeding and if i talk about the elementary canal it is again complete in the valleygar larva so here also the elementary canal is complete we have the mouth we have got the esophagus we have the stomach we have the intestine and then we have the anus but here in this valleygar larva the anus is shifted towards the interior side of the body and this is a very prominent uh, characteristic feature of the mollusks as we know uh, by the name of the torsion so in this particular larva there is a very comparable kind of uh, phenomenon uh, which is comparable to the torsion which moves the anus from the hind end towards the interior side now if i talk about the foot it is uh, usually it is bearing an upper column and during the valleygar larva development if i talk about the development of this larval stage so the torsion is occurring and it is shifting the anus to the anterior side and this is a very very important phenomenon that is occurring in the valleygar larva and this is the torsion so you might get a question on the torsion that uh, what is torsion what is the phenomenon what is the mechanism and how it occurs in different mollusks so students that was the second type of the larva which is found in the mollusks and then we have the third type of the larva in the phylum mollusca and this is the glucidium larva now first of all if i talk about the glucidium it is having two shell valves so this is a very very important characteristic feature of this larva that it is having two shell valves and it is very closely resembling the bivalves as the mollusca phylum has got three classes the first class is the cephalopoda group second is the gastropods the round shelled mollusks and the third is the bivalves bivalve or the unio or the pearl forming uh, you can say the mollusks they are the bivalve mollusks and this glucidium larva is very much comparable to a bivalve now each edge of the two valves it is bearing a hook on the top and this hook is actually having teeth over it so these are very very important characteristic you can say structures which are present in the glucidium larva now if i talk about the shell valves they cover a larval mantle so uh, as if i if i talk about uh, say pila that is a gastropod that is not a bivalve but if i break the shell of the pila what we have inside it is the mantle so mantle is the actual body of the animal it is the outer body of the animal so these two shell valves they are enclosing a mantle inside them now these shell valves they bear four groups of sensory bristles also and these sensory bristles they are present towards the inside of the glucidium larva as we have the shell valves on the outermost sides towards the inside we have the sensory bristles now there is a foot present but it is quite rudimentary in the center and very comparable to an adult bivalve we have the adductor muscles present in between the two shell valves which can close up these shells and the whole of the larva can contract and become like a, a concave disc kind of a structure now here 
if I talk about the elementary canal or the you can say the mouth or the anus we do not find any kind of mouth or anus here in this larva this larva is basically parasitic in nature so it measures from near about 0 0.2 mm to 0 0.6 mm so this is the uh, you can say the length of this particular larva and this is a free swimming kind of a larva but it is free swimming but it will be forming an adult which is fixed in position so here uh, the internal parasites they are generally having uh, they may be present or they have this kind of a stage which may be called as a larval stage and uh, which is very important in transferring either by the active or the passive migration to a new kind of a host so uh, if I talk more about the glucidium it is highly modified for a pass parasitic kind of existence on uh, different animals so here the animal which is it is parasitizing on it is a fish so if I uh, if I uh, give you a diagram of the glucidium so here you can very well see that it has been stuck into the gills of a fish now these larvae they can clamp on the body and other parts of uh, the fish so here you can see the clamping of these larvae in inside the gill slits now the larval mantle it consists of the phagocytic cells that feed on the tissue of the host this is a very important feature so when they stick to the body of a fish they can feed on the tissue of the host and they can obtain the nutrition for the development now this period of uh, the life cycle of the glucidium it can last for about like 10 to 20 or 25 days this parasitic period it is for 25 days it may rise up to 25 days uh, in the meantime the parasite is surrounded by the overgrowth of skin of the fish forming a cyst kind of a thing so what happens that this parasite when it sticks to the fish the skin of the fish it will be forming over this particular uh, larval stage so that will form a cyst kind of a structure uh, on the surface of the fish so some of the larger freshwater molluscans they may produce a large amounts in lakhs of the glucidia larvae and from this glucidium larva the final adult form will be formed and that will be a fixed kind of a form so uh, students this glucidium larva is very very important as far as the bivalves are concerned so uh, these larval stages can give us a moderate kind of a, you can say information about the adult which they are forming and they are somewhat resembling to the adult but not too much if i take about the the structure of the trochophore the first larval form uh, it is not even resembling the adult it is uh, making the second larval form which is the valigar larva and that forms that actually it is comparable to the adult form the valigar is very close to the adult mollusk with a shell so it is again with the soft body and a shell so the vellum it is present the foot is also present it is also having uh, you can say eyes so it is a having a complete uh, elementary canal the digestive system <clears throat> so it is very close to the adult forms and if we go for the glucidium larva it is parasitic though but uh, it is again very close to the bivalve uh, you can say adult mollusks so students uh, these were the three different larval forms which are present in the mollusks and if you together uh, 
go for all the three structures of the larvae and you give some of the physiology of this larval stage individually so uh, you may get a uh, full of this particular question so i hope uh, you can uh, explain the three different types of larvae found in the bollocks in uh, uh, in this particular phylum the mollusca after going through this particular topic thank you